Hi guys, in this video I'm going to take you through the principles of using Drayton's auto balancing TRVs with your central heating system. So let's begin by looking at why it's important for us to have a balanced heating system. And here we have a mock-up of a boiler and some radiators. And in reality, these radiators will be all in different rooms of the property. They're all likely to be different sizes to accommodate the output requirements of the respective rooms. And they're all going to have different lengths of pipe work feeding them from the flow and return from the boiler. But what that all amounts to is that no two radiators are the same in terms of their resistance to flow. And what you tend to find is that the radiators that are closest to the boiler tend to have less resistance to flow than ones further away. And balancing looks to even this out across the whole of the system. To do this, we need some way of restricting the flow into the radiators. So we fit some valves. Now, it doesn't matter whether the radiators are being controlled by manual valves whether there's a lock shield at either end or whether at one of the ends there is a thermostatic radiator valve, ultimately a radiator system needs to be balanced regardless of the method of control for the actual radiator itself. Once the valves are in, we then add some pipe work. So this is our flow. This is the hot water leaving the boiler. And then we've got the return, which is the cooler water, once it's been through the radiator, going back to the boiler. Now you'll hear the term delta T referred to when talking about balancing a heating system and what that means is differential temperature. That is the difference in temperature between the water leaving the boiler on the flow and what is coming back to the boiler on the return. And typically most boiler manufacturers recommend a delta T of 20 degrees for the boiler to run at optimum efficiency. So what we're looking to achieve by balancing a heating system is that as the hot water leaves the boiler and approaches the T for any particular radiator, there's no greater or lesser resistance for the flow to go either through the radiator or to carry on in the flow to fulfill the heating requirements of the other radiators downstream on the circuit. And this way, we're ensuring that all of the radiators on the system are getting sufficient amounts of hot water to achieve their heat output. Now here we have a scenario where the system is out of balance and this first radiator it hasn't been balanced so the, the valves are wide open. So as the hot water leaves the boiler and approaches the T, it now finds that the path of least resistance is to go through the radiator and therefore it doesn't allow the, the water to flow on to the rest of the radiators on the system. This causes two main issues. Firstly, other radiators on the system don't receive enough hot water, so they're unable to achieve their heat output, and that will result in cold rooms. And this will be a particularly apparent on those radiators furthest away from the boiler or where the hot water has needed to be elevated to higher floors. And secondly, this short circuiting will allow the return temperature to increase much quicker than it would normally. So you've no longer got a delta T of 20. And it's highly likely that the return temperature will rise above 54 degrees, which is dew point, And that will mean that the boiler will no longer be in condensing mode, severely impacting boiler efficiency. So when you're not using an auto balancing TRV to balance a radiator system, there are two main ways of doing it, using the lock shield to restrict the flow into the radiator, or if you're using the Drayton TRV body that comes with the RT414 or the TRV4, you can set the balance on the TRV valve body itself. To make balancing as easy as possible, you need to have a valve with high valve authority. This generally means that the body has built-in resistance to flow so that the throttling effect by reducing the aperture size is effective over more of its travel. The ports on lock shield valves tend to be quite large on both the inlet and the outlet which gives low valve authority. This can make balancing quite challenging as the difference between the valve being wide open and fully closed can be less than two turns and it's within these two turns that you'll be working to achieve throttling. The fundamental principle here is mass flow rate, and here is the formula for it. It basically means the amount of liquid or gas that flows in a certain amount of time. From this we can derive a formula to calculate the necessary flow required for a radiator of a given size. Let's start by listing the key elements. Flow rate measured in litres per second, heat output measured in kilowatts, 
Difference in temperature measured in degrees Celsius, and this is where the term delta T comes from, the difference in temperature between the flow and return. And specific heat capacity measured in joules per gram degrees Celsius. This sounds complex, but it is a constant value for water, which is 4.186 joules per gram degrees Celsius. This is typically rounded up to 4.2 for simplicity. What this value states is the amount of energy required to elevate one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So here are how these relate to each other. The industry standard is to have a delta T of 20 degrees Celsius. So this formula simplifies down to heat output divided by 84. So clearly heat output from the radiator is a key factor when calculating flow rate. However, this output will be influenced by the flow temperature of the system. The stated output of most radiators will be their maximum output at a flow temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. If this aligns with the flow temperature of your system, then you can use the stated radiator output in the flow rate calculation. But what happens if you are running lower flow temperatures? This will reduce the heat output of the radiator, which will have a knock-on effect to the required flow rate. So the message here is to always check the radiator heat output based on the flow temperature of your system and set the auto balancing valves accordingly. Don't just take the radiator output at face value. So here is an example of calculating the flow rate for a 700 watt radiator with a delta T of 20 degrees Celsius. The unit for heat output is kilowatts, so a 700 watt radiator will be 0.7 divided by 84. This gives a value of 0.008 and some change, but this is in litres per second. Multiply by 60 to get into litres per minute, and multiply again by 60 to get to litres per hour. So a 700 watt radiator with a delta T of 20 degrees Celsius will require a flow rate of 30 litres per hour. If we cross check this with the chart on the box, we can see that the value needs to be set to position 3, which is indeed 30 litres per hour. Auto balancing TRVs, which are sometimes referred to as pressure independent valves, can be preset to allow a fixed flow rate into the radiator irrespective of changes in pressure to the system. Instead of setting a fixed aperture size as you would with a lock shield, these have an active element inside that automatically adjusts to maintain constant flow rate. The flow rate is set by turning the valve insert to the correct position for the radiator output. This can be established from the data on the box if the radiator output is known, or for retrofitting, we have an online calculator which uses the radiator size and type to identify the flow rate. These valve bodies are unidirectional, so you need to observe and follow the flow direction arrow when fitting. They can be fitted on either the flow or return, however, if the angled body is fitted on the return side, the sensing head will need to sit horizontally to respect the flow direction. So here are some best practice tips when using Drayton's auto balancing TRVs. Firstly, you need to ensure that the system is clean and free from any debris. It is a good idea to have the system flushed with the old bodies installed and fit the Drayton auto balancing TRVs afterwards to make sure that the small aperture within the valves is kept clean. Next, you need to make sure the flow follows the flow direction arrow on the body and orientate the head accordingly. Thirdly, these need to be fitted on every radiator, including those that do not have sensing heads. Here, a manual wheel head or chrome cap can be fitted instead of the thermostatically controlled head. Lastly, these valves work best on systems where the flow rate is fixed. Some boilers with internal pumps will be burner linked, meaning that the flow rate will be automatically reduced as demand decreases. It is important that the decrease in flow is still enough to fulfill the flow setting on each valve. This is typically the case, but it's worth checking to see what the minimum flow rate the pump will modulate down to. So that's how you can make sure your system is always in balance by using Drayton's auto balancing TRVs, which can save you up to 8.8% on energy usage. For more information, head over to the Drayton Controls website and don't forget to join our Facebook group, the Drayton Community.